Howdy readers, I'm Jason, and this is chapter and verse. It being Easter Sunday, what I want to talk to you about is this book here. And this is Wearing God, Clothing, Laughter, Fire, and Other Overlooked Ways of Meeting God by Lauren Winner. <clears throat> uh, I finished reading it mid last week, um, Tuesday or Wednesday. So Lauren Winner is brilliant I mean with a capital B brilliant right she's younger than I am she has published I want to say six books five or six books she has two master's degrees she has a PhD she's a professor at Duke she is an Episcopal priest um, and she's in her early 40s she may not even have gray hair yet uh, at all I don't know I have a lot of it in my view her first book was this one here um, and this is probably my favorite memoir I've ever read, A Girl Meets God. And it chronicles her, her movement from uh, Judaism to Christianity. Um, I've also read of hers um, sort of a sequel to Girl Meets God. It's another memoir called Still Notes on a Mid-Faith uh, Crisis. If you're looking for a book that um, makes it very, very clear uh, the role and the importance that reading can have in a person's life and in a person's faith um, still is is the book that you should you should definitely read. But today we're going to talk about uh, wearing God again. Uh, so this book asks the question uh, primarily, right? How do we see God? Uh, how does the Bible bid us to imagine God? Okay. Well, it does that primarily with a masculine uh, lexicon. The staples of that lexicon being uh, father, king or lord, and shepherd. But what we often fail to, to, to remember or fail to understand is that um, the Bible also gives us lots of other ways of imagining God. Uh, if we turn to, what is it, page six in the book here, Winner reminds us that there's biblical precedent for imagining God as drunkard, as beekeeper, as a tree, okay? Um, so so each chapter in this book is, is devoted to um, one specific metaphor or simile, a, a new kind of imagistic way of looking at God. Essentially what Winner is trying to do is to remind us that God is everything, that he is, I mean, we, we understand that as Christians, right? We know um, that he is everything in our lives. Um, but beyond that, beyond ourselves, uh, beyond our frame of reference, we get too comfortable, I think, with the masculine pronouns uh, in, in thinking of God. Was, I, I find myself always slipping back into masculine pronouns just out of habit, just out of convenience more than anything else. So then how can we conceive of God in, uh, in ways that are fruitful and interesting and um, instructive? Because there are instances in scripture when we are called on to imagine God as a woman giving birth. And that's a kind of paradigm shifting way of seeing God. Um, it, it probably feels really alien to us. It probably feels a little disconcerting to us. Um, and the question is, um, why? And what can we gain from that? What can we gain from engaging with being challenged in that way? Uh, so this is on page 17 here in the paperback. Uh, and she writes, uh, it is one of my working theories in the spiritual life that when a prayer or a parable or phrase from the Bible rubs you the wrong way, but you find yourself unable to set down the rankling thing and move on, the rankling might in fact be the Holy Spirit's way of getting your attention, of fixing your eyes and asking you to look more closely at the prayer to discover what it holds for you. If only you'd be willing to explore it and yourself deeply enough. So I love that. That's That could be a kind of working thesis for my own uh, faith life, actually. I feel like when faith becomes about patting us on the back or about reassuring us at all costs, um, that that's not really, that's not necessarily a healthy faith. It's an easy faith. Um, or let's say it's an easier faith than allowing ourselves to be pushed and kind of knocked off balance a little bit. I'm interested in growing uh, in my in my relationship with God, and um, and the only way that growing happens 
is through difficulty. And that's true of anything in life, as we know. Um, so it shouldn't be easy, okay? And so when we're confronted with an idea or an image of God um, that, that, that makes us uneasy, well, there's something, there's, there's good on the other side of that somehow. If we can navigate it, there's good on the other side of that. So the best part about this book is the kind of middle chapter, the middle section, right? It's the hinge on which the book turns, I feel like. And it is um, the section of the book, the chapter in the book called Laboring Woman. I just, I felt like it was constantly pulling the rug out from under me, teaching me something new, asking me to engage with God in a way uh, that maybe had a, a deeper vein of intimacy uh, running through it. And... I, I like that idea, okay? Um, it, it, it gets a little old, and it gets a little uh, wearisome, just always thinking of God as, uh, you know, having the keys to the kingdom and sitting on the throne and being all-powerful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. To think of God as a laboring woman, um, as someone who is fearful, as somebody who is vulnerable, as uh, somebody in pain, um, that is... That is incredibly powerful. And it can really be kind of life-altering, I suppose, if we really engage with the image. I'll tell you what, this chapter was maybe the best 40 pages of anything I've read so far this year. And I've read some good shit this year. I read Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. And that. So what are some other metaphors or similes um, for conceiving of God that might be useful to us? And I was thinking, since we're on BookTube... Um, it might be fun to imagine God as being like the alphabet, right? So the alphabet uh, is the source of a universe of possible stories and meanings, okay? Not unlike God. Uh, the alphabet can cohere, okay, into decrees and narratives that might be brutish and cruel or that might be wondrous and life-giving, okay? Um, depending on who is wielding them. Not unlike God, all right? Um, what other, and that's what I want to invite you to do, okay, is, is in the comments section below, um, see if you can't come up with some, some, some fresh, new, invigorating ways to imagine God. What are some new metaphors for thinking about God? And, uh, and where might those metaphors take you? So share those with me in, uh, in the comments. And, uh, and check this book out, right? Check, check out Wearing God. Um, because it's it's pretty wonderful. Uh, I will try to get another video out to you uh, later in the week. Uh, but until then, uh, have a good evening. Um, if you're going to watch Jesus Christ Superstar uh, tonight with John Legend, let's hope it's good. All right, fingers crossed. I think it's bizarre that Alice Cooper's in it, but hey, I'm not the guy who's uh, who's making it. I will see you soon.